I, I like to play around and whatever, and I ride a snowmobile, and I sometimes I'm a little too crazy and go too fast and whatever. Well, I had an event January 29th. I was riding in a ditch, and I there was drifts, and I Mother Nature blew in a big one, and I had a 12-foot drop off. And when the snowmobile went down, my leg was an extension, so I was riding it, and when I hit, um, it, all that energy, the snowmobile just plugged in the snow, and all that energy just drove through my knee, and it, it busted my knee up. I uh, fractured my tibial plateau, which is the top of your leg here, and there was a piece, thank God, that it was stable, meaning it was still sitting there, which is a great thing for me. I tore my medial meniscus, the posterior two-thirds of my medial meniscus, and I put a crack in the bottom of my femur. My femur. So here's what I did to... Um, turn this off. Here's what I did to... Uh, something probably have to cool down or something. It's in right on my eyes. So... Um, so, I have a lot of knowledge about how to make the body heal and get it right on track and try to get it well as fast as I can, right? Because it's what I try to study and learn and I try to read stuff every day. So I had a trauma. So within, the, within 10 minutes of the accident, I had snow wrapped up in a t-shirt and on my knee to help with the inflammation, to control the inflammation. Inflammation's good, right? Smart or stupid? Smart. So when you sprain your ankle and it swells, smart or stupid? Smart. Because your body's in a surviving mode right then, and it's bringing cells and pieces to the area to scavenger and take bad stuff away, and it's bringing cells and tissues in there to build good stuff in, okay? So I, but you want to control the quantity of inflammation, but you don't want to screw with the quality of inflammation, and that's what anti-inflammatories do. So medically, if I would have gone to the emergency room, probably would have got some anti-inflammatory. Once you guess. So I had a buddy with me and I rode it back to the trailer. We went to my office and we took a picture of it. So then I saw the fracture in the tibia. And I knew I hurt it bad because it hurt bad. And so I was icing it. So immediately that night, what I did was I iced it um, constantly. I iced it for actually the first two weeks constantly. And you think, well, shouldn't you ice it for, you know, the 20 on and then an hour off? But my body was in a really bad state, and I needed to control that amount of inflammation. And so the next day, Saturday, this happened Friday night, the next day, I decided that I was going to go into complete repair mode. And so what that meant was I ate constantly as consistently as much as I could all through the day. The only thing I ate was vegetables, fruits, unsalted nuts, seeds, berries, wild-caught fish. I didn't do any animal or any chicken or beef, even if it was free range or grass fed, I didn't care. I just wanted to stay away from that because I didn't want to make my body toxic at all because omega-6 causes inflammation, right? So I wanted to put my body in an anti-inflammatory mode, which is an alkaline state, alkalinity. I drove alkalinity in my body. So all through that Saturday, I started with my nutrition. I actually had to drive to Omaha too. And so I got a brace from a buddy that screwed up his knee before, so that helped me mobilize it because I had a fracture, right? So. I, start, I immobilized it. The nice thing was I could pack ice inside the immobilizer and it was that nice Velcro thing, so it was awesome. And I had crutches, and so I was not a weight bearing. And um, I started taking supplementation. I took calcium every two hours. I took omega-3 fatty acids every three hours. Omega-3 has amazing anti-inflammatory potential properties. I was doing uh, a probiotic, which helps with your gut and your floor, so then my body could absorb the nutrition that I was trying to put in the best that it could. But for the first two weeks, all my vegetables, fruits, berries, nuts was all raw. I didn't cook anything. So I took it in its raw, real form like the hunter and gatherer could have got it out of his woods. Um, I was doing my multivitamin mineral, which is called Daily Balance, six times a day. I was doing glucosamine sulfate three times a day. I was doing proteoly proteolytic enzymes, which also helps with inflammation twice a day. I was doing uh, a supplement called Painex, which has bromelain in it, which is an anti-inflammatory that naturally comes from pineapples, and Qcertin, which helps with inflammation as well. So naturally, I was doing all that stuff. A lot of pain Saturday, a lot of pain Sunday. I didn't take one pain pill or one anti-inflammatory through this whole thing. I needed to have my body in complete control to feel its pain and to heal. The inflammation heals. But the pain also tells my body what I can do and what I can't do. But I control the pain with the ice. 
On Sunday, I had one of my colleagues come over and adjust my knee. I almost passed out and yeah. beat my pants. It hurt bad. But when I had that injury, it knocked my knee hinge out of alignment. Our, heat, our knee's a hinge, a femur and a tibia, and it comes together and it makes a hinge like this. And so I needed to get this back in gear so that I wasn't causing, the, it was in a, its proper state. That hurt. So then Monday, I worked. I went to work on Monday. Um, worked all day, saw a lot of people. Had to crutch around, it was difficult. Same thing with my nutrition, my water, my hydration. Even starting on Saturday morning, I was drinking about two gallons of water a day. I set an alarm at nighttime to wake up to ice. So I'd set an alarm for every hour. So I'd ice constantly with the cold gel ice packs. And so then I'd wake up every hour and I'd, you know, even Raquel offered to go get the ice and I said no because I wanted motion. Because the motion moved my lymphatic system. My lymphatic system is how my body rids its weight. So I wanted to do it myself so I could move. So when I'd get up, I'd have to go to the bathroom because I was drinking a lot of water. So I'd go to the bathroom, I'd get another glass of water, I'd drink my glass of water, I'd get my ice, then I'd go back and I'd elevate and ice and do that. On Monday, Dr. Ross adjusted my knee Monday morning. Hurt, but it wasn't quite as bad. The adjustment. And then he adjusted it, I think we adjusted it three times that day. Because with the swelling and stuff, that was kind of trying to want to push things out, right? Um, Monday night, I ordered myself an MRI and I went to IR radiology and they did an MRI and that's where I could see the rest of the damage to my knee because you can't, with the plain film x-ray, I could just see the fracture. So that's what showed me that the crack was all the way through the tibial plateau and that chunk was sitting there and the tear in the medial meniscus and a crack in the bottom of the femur. So then, uh, you know, every day was the same. It was the same thing. My nutrition, my nutrition, my micronutrition, supplementation, the water. I had one of the massage therapists in the office uh, massage my leg to help move that lymph, that accumulation of swelling out because I didn't have much motion, right? Because my knee was broke. So I had about 30 degrees motion. So also in between the icings, like when I, when I take the immobilizer off to change my ice, I would move my knee a little bit. And I, since I wasn't taking any pain pills, it'd be like, ouch, 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 okay, that's good. Ouch, 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 okay, that's good. So I started to move the knee. Stayed immobilized on the crutches for the first week. Raquel wanted me to have a second opinion with an orthopedic surgeon, so I hesitated, but I said, okay, what's a conversation? So I went to the guy and had a conversation, and he said, he, I sat in his, office the girl said you know uh, can you take the immobilizer off and I said yeah and this was a week later and by that time when he walked in oops, sorry, I had 90 degree flexion in my knee already so I sat in the office like this and when I was waiting for him for 20 minutes what I do through that week you know like when I take that immobilizer off I pull my heel back and be like ouch and I just let it sit there for a while and then I just pull it back a little bit more and then I'd let it sit there for a little while, you know, over the course of an evening when I was, now I was icing it with ace bandage around it so I didn't have the immobilizer at home. And then over the course of like, you know, the three hours through the evening, by the time the end of the evening would come, I could have it to 90 degrees without pain. And so when I came into the office, I was sitting like this. And then she told me to take the immobilizer off and he said, what's going on? And I said, well, I, you know, I broke my leg. And radio the radiologist report says tearing the meniscus. And he said, yeah. He said, wow. And I said, I've been working with it. He said, obviously. And so he said, you know how bad this is? And I said, well, yeah. And he said, come look at the MRI. And so when he scrolled through it, because I didn't look at the MRI CD yet, I just looked at the radiologist report, that that fracture, that's when I didn't realize that it was all the way through the tubule plateau. So his recommendation for me was tiptoe weight bearing immobilized for six weeks. After that, he would uh, do orthoscopic surgery on the torn meniscus, and that would be another immobilized for six weeks. So 12 weeks, immobilized. I said, okay, thanks for your time. And he said, I want to see you again in two to three weeks, and you can either, because I took a new film of it, because this was a week later, he said, you can either take your own film again and bring it, or we can do a film here. And I said, sounds good. I never went back, because Another week went by, and by that